hey guys welcome back to the channel and if you're new here thank you for clicking on this video i have lots of information to share so definitely keep watching until the end like the title suggests i will be telling you about the pathway from being an international student to becoming a permanent resident in canada if that's your aim anyways but if that's your aim definitely i have everything to share with you for your new journey or if you're already on this journey not to worry so first thing that you need to do you need to of course be registered in a designated learning institution hold up if you don't know what that is and you have no clue and you're just starting the process not to worry i got your back click on this video above and just revert. You can go to that video and then come to this video and then you'll understand the process from start to end. So the first thing that you need to do, like I said before, register in a designated learning institution. From there, you just need to go to school and do your best and make sure that you're done in time so that you can apply for what we call a postgrad work permit. You can be doing eight months program, which is one academic year to get a one year postgrad work permit, or you can do two years and you can get two years or up to three years, or you can do three years and get three years. So the aim is to get your postgrad work permit. So definitely go to school, do your best, and let's get this ball rolling. Once you've completed school, just go ahead and apply for what we call the postgrad work permit, like I said before, or PGWP. You'll hear that word thrown around. So get used to the acronyms, PGWP, DLI for Designated Learning Institution. So step, that's your first step. Done school, time to move on. Apply for your postgrad work permit. Bam, you've applied for your postgrad work permit. It's now time to search for a job. But hold up. What kind of job are we looking for? There's a huge misconception that we should be applying for jobs that we go to school to study. So for example, like me, I went to school and I did project management. When I finished school, should I only be applying for project management program? No. I have a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and I have this graduate certificate in project management. What that means is I can apply for jobs in chemical engineering or in project management as long as those jobs are in particular NOCs. So let's talk about NOCs for a little bit because I don't want you to go and apply for any job and then at the end of the day, you've wasted all your time. So make sure that the job that you're applying for is either NOCA, a NOCB, or zero. Let's get into the nitty gritty of what these are because you need to know before you even start this process. So first of all, A is professional jobs. You need a degree to apply for those jobs. B, you need a college diploma to apply for the job, like training, like apprenticeship, or you know, those kind of things to apply for the job. You can go on the NLC and you'll see exactly the type of jobs because what they do, they match up. If it's B, they have the job titles there ready for you. And if it's zero, it's management jobs. So let me tell you a little secret. If you're going to school and you're working at McDonald's and they were willing to give you a management position, take that management position if you can't get a job in the area that you want because that management position can help you to become a permanent resident so that's my tip so once you've received the job you need to be working in the job for a year for 30 hours per week another thing the job does not have to be you don't have to be working in the same job for the entire year you just need to be consistently working for 12 months for 30 hours per week. And it doesn't have to be one job at one given point. So let's say you get a part-time job and you're like, no, I'm not taking this part-time job because I need the 30 hours per week. Yes, you do need the 30 hours per week, but you can get two part-time jobs. 
that gives you 15 15. another huge misconception is that if i do 60 hours per week for six months i can go ahead and apply for the pr no you can't you still need that 12 months at 30 hours per week so if you work 60 hours you're working that 30 hours to put money in your pocket which you know we all need money so definitely that's what you're doing at that point because it's just a requirement that you need to fulfill once you've completed that 12 months and that 30 hours per week you now need to make sure that you've gathered all your documents in the interim. So that 12 month period, you're making sure that you're gathering all the documents. You're doing the English test, you're doing the police record, you're gathering everything that you possibly need to gather. And I will do another video to tell you everything that you need to make sure that you have to apply. Um, so just make sure that you're checking, you're gathering the documents. And once that 12 month hits, you're ready, ready, ready to go. What you're ready to go and do is you're ready to go and submit your application through the Express Entry Program underneath the Canadian Experience class. And another acronym for you is CEC. So you're going to the Express Entry Program underneath the CEC. So with the, what the CEC actually means is that you've gathered Canadian experience, which is that 12 months that we've been talking about, right? So once you've gathered all of your documents, you submit your application through your GC key, then you wait for your, you basically stand in a virtual line and you wait for your name to be called based on the scores that you have at that point it's not up to you it's up to all those that apply what the pool entails so once you've received what we call a it another acronym it's invitation to apply for your permanent residency once you get that ita to apply for the permanent residency what you need to do is you need to gather all the proofs. You need to gather all your documents, your passport, everything that you told them that you have. This is the time that you bring everything forward to the forefront so that whoever is assessing your paper see that everything that you said is the honest truth. So I've given you quite a little bit, but it's a short video. So I'll just reiterate everything um, from start to finish. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to complete school. The second thing you need to go ahead and do is apply for your postgrad work permit. Once you've applied for your postgrad work permit, you need to get a job that's in NOC A, B, or zero, and you need to be working for twelve for a twelve month period for thirty hours per week. Once you've gathered your experience on all the remaining documents that you need you can apply for the Express Entry Program. Once you've applied for the Express Entry Program, you wait for what we call the ITA. Get your ITA, now it's time for you to go ahead and provide all your documentations, your medical, everything that you need, it's time to provide it to the officer so they can assess. And from there on, it's a waiting game. And the waiting game sometimes can be long, it can be short and that's basically it i'll be doing more videos to explain this in a little bit more details because there's a lot more to it than start to finish but it is very 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 important to know your start to finish before you start a journey but anyways thank you once again for watching and if you have reached to the end of the video and you have not yet subscribed please subscribe to my channel add me on instagram my instagram is here stay tuned thank you